So today we shall be continuing to discuss from Shriman Bhagavatam the today's subject matter actually is Kamsa is trying to appease Vasudeva and Devaki and speaking some jnana, some transcendental wisdom and uh, Vasudeva and Devaki, they are pacified by the uh, repentant behavior of Kamsa. So, Okay, so here uh, comes continues to speak. Yathanevam vidho vedo yat atma viprayayam deha yoga viyoga ucham samstrina nivartate. This one who does not understand the constitutional position of the body and the soul, atma becomes too attached to the bodily concept of life. Consequently, because of attachment to the body and its byproducts, he feels affected by union with the separation from his family, society, and nation. As long as this continues, one continues this material life. Otherwise, one is liberated. So, of course, this is actually the true wisdom, transcendental wisdom, what comes as speaking. Says, Yatha Anveham Vidho Bhedo. An Evam Vidha. Evam Vidha means this knowledge. Which knowledge he is talking about? The knowledge that he was referring in previous verses, especially in the text 19. You know. So in the text 19, Kamsa was mentioning, in this world we can see that pots, dolls, other products of the earth appear break and then disappear, mixing with the earth. Similarly, the bodies of all conditioned living entities are annihilated. But the living entities, like the earth itself, are unchanging and never annihilated. So he was mainly talking about the body and the soul. So he's referring that here. Yatha. An evam vidha. Evam vidha. This knowledge. If one Un, un means negation. So if one does not know this knowledge or has no wisdom of this kind, then the body is always transforming like the parts, earthen part and different things that are created from the earth. And the soul is like earth, which is never transformed. It remains in its original constitutional position. So soul is by nature Satchitananda and it always remains Satchitananda. Not because the soul has come in contact with matter, therefore it becomes uh, contaminated by the matter. No. The soul always remains Satchitananda. It is only covered. Covered by the material consciousness. So here uh, uh, Kamsa is speaking that if somebody does not know this uh, knowledge, then what happens? Deha yoga vyoga yoga. He continues uh, or he uh, continues to uh, understand or perceive the yoga and vyoga in relationship to the body. So things which are connected to body, when they are, you know, he is receiving, he is getting some comfort relationship to body, he feels happy. And Vyoga, when he is separated, he feels unhappy. So, relationship to body could be people or could be things. So, for example, somebody, you know, uh, his car is damaged, his or her car is damaged people start crying or they feel very sorry that, oh, my car is damaged. Or 
if there's a flood and the home gets, uh, you know, affected or, you know, under the flood, the person will feel very sorry for that. Or if somebody dies in the family, people feel unhappy. So, for such people, samsritre na nevartate, samsara chakra, you know, the repetition of birth in that is na nevartate, is not stopped. So, actually, we have to understand that the, the real liberation, na nevartate, the liberation is not possible for people in such construction of life. But the real liberation is Kiha Yasya Harel Dasya Karmana Manasagira Niklapi Avasthasu Jeevan Mukta Sauchate. Even while living in this world, a person can be considered liberated if he or she is situated Kiha Yasya Harel Dasya. When situated in a Dasitva or service to the Lord, as a servant to Lord Hari. Then, Nikola Piyavasthasu, no matter what situation a person is in, whether in the material body or uh, in the material world or in the spiritual world, doesn't matter. Jeevan Mukta Sauchate, a person is actually liberated. Uh, uh, and you know, any other situation cannot actually satisfy the soul. As Bhagavatam explains, Samsiddhir Haritana, Yen Atma Suprasidati. Atma is satisfied only when it is in connection with Supreme Lord, when it's engaged in devotional service to the Supreme Lord. So, uh, what comes as speaking here is actually the true wisdom. But the only thing is, he could not follow this wisdom before. He's giving Upadesh, he's giving that wisdom to his sister and brother-in-law to pacify them. But he himself could not follow this wisdom. Now, the next verse he speaks. Tasma bhadre swatanayan maya vyapad vyapaditan ipi api manu shojo yata sarva swakritam vindate vasha. Another piece of wisdom he's talking about now. What is the wisdom he is saying here? My dear sister Devki, all good fortune unto you. Badre. Badre means, you know, oh auspicious one. All good fortune unto you. Everyone suffers and enjoys the results of his work under the control of providence. Therefore, although your sons have been unfortunately been killed by me, please do not lament for them. So, <clears throat> there is mixed feeling in Kamsa now. Of course, he is giving jnana. Uh, in one way, he is trying to pacify Vasudev and Devki. But within himself, he knows, he is very much conscious that he has killed the children of Devki, his own sister. So, therefore, he says, uh, Oh, Bhadre, oh, Auspicious one, my dear sister. Swatanayan Maya Vya Padita. Swatanaya, your own children, Vya Padita. They've been killed by me. Api, although I have killed them. Manu Shoja, you should not lament for them. Why you should not lament for them? Swakritam Vindate Avasha. People in this world, Sarva, all people in this world, without any exception, Swakritam Vindate, they actually uh, enjoy or suffer the fruits of their own actions. So your children were killed because of their own karma, their own actions. Unfortunately, I have been the instrument to deliver this karma to them, but they have actually enjoyed the fruits of their own karma, which is actually true. We understand that these three, these six sons of Devaki, 
they were actually the Vishadgarbas, they were actually cursed by Hiranyakashipu to be killed by their own father in the next life. So the same father has appeared as Kamsa and same children have appeared as the children of Devaki. So roles keep changing in this world. But what wisdom Kamsa is talking is actually the true wisdom. <clears throat> Now here, text 22, he says, Yavadhato smi hanta smi Tvatmanam bannate swadri Tavattan abhimani gyo Bhadya bhad katam tiyad He says, In the bodily conception of life, one remains in darkness without self-realization, thinking, I am being killed or I have killed my enemies. As long as a foolish person does consider the self to be killer or killed, he continues to be responsible for material obligations and consequently he suffers the reactions of happiness and distress. So this is, again, the transcendental wisdom, the jnana. It's actually very amazing that even in ancient times, Demons also possessed transcendental wisdom. That's a different thing that they fail to apply that sometime in their lives, but demons also know the transcendental wisdom. And they try to practice, not that they don't try to practice, but uh, sometime being impelled by the lower modes of material nature, passion and ignorance. They forget this wisdom, and they behave completely contradictory. So here comes as saying, Yavat Hatosmi Hantasmi. Hatosmi means I am being killed and Hantasmi. I am the killer. I have killed somebody. So, to Atmanam Mannete. As long as the person continues to consider himself, you know, like this. That, uh, that I am killer or I am being killed. Tavat tad abhimani agyo. Agyo, such a person is actually a fool. And abhimani. Abhimani means, you know, uh, the, the false conception. The false conception of being doer. Like we say, you know, Hindi also word abhiman. So, Abhimani means a person who uh, considers himself the doer. Okay. That Abhimani, Agyo, such a person is a fool. Then what happens to such a fool? Badhya, Badhakatam. He is obliged. Badhya means to be obliged. And Badhakatam means he obliged others. So, this cycle of being obliged and obliging others continues. And this is nothing but karma. Actually, Krishna says that Bhagavad Gita, na kartrutum na karmani lokasya srijate prabhu. Na kartrutum. A soul is not the doer. Na kartrutum na karmani. Kartrutum, soul is not obliging anyone else to, to act in a certain way. Uh, and na karmani. And soul is not the doer either. And this is the true wisdom. Soul does not engage in any karma and soul does not oblige anyone else to engage in certain karma. Krishna says, Svabhavastu pravartate. People helplessly act because of Svabhava. Svabhava means affliction due to three modes of material nature. So people act being helpless under the influence of three modes of material nature. Now we have discussed many times this example. Like Kamsa has wanted to kill Devaki because her child is going to kill him. Or Kamsa wanted to kill Krishna. He wanted to kill the child of Devaki and Vasudev, thinking that he was going to kill me. Because he heard that 
the eighth child of Devaki is going to kill him. But similarly, you know, Bhishma Dev, he knew that the son of Pandu, named Arjun, he is going to kill him. But you see the contrast between the two people's behavior. Similarly, Dronacharya knew that the son of Drupad, name, namely uh, Drishtadyumna, he is simply born. The purpose of his birth is to kill Dronacharya. And yet, when Drupad sent his son under the care of Dronacharya to be trained by Dronacharya, Dronacharya did not think, okay, let me poison and kill him. Like, child was under his care. He could have done it. Unlike Kamsa, you know, he had no access to child. But Dronacharya had child under his care and he knew that this child is going to kill me in the future. And yet he gave him nice training to fight, to be successful on the battlefield, knowing that someday this person is going to kill me. And not only that, he gave him blessings also that you will be successful in achieving the mission of your life. When he completed his education, Dronacharya actually blessed him. That may you be successful in executing the mission of your life. That means you may be successful in killing me. And Dronacharya's blessings cannot go in vain. So, if it is natural for a person hearing upon one's own death to behave like Kamsa, then even Bhishma and Dronacharya should have behaved in the same way. But that's not true. And Krishna says, Swabhavastu pravartate. People act because of their Swabhava. So Kamsa being afflicted by the mode of passion and ignorance, he forgot all this wisdom that he's talking about now. He just couldn't, uh, even though it was reminded to him, it's not that uh, he completely forgot. He was reminded by this wisdom by Vasudev. Vasudev spoke all this wisdom to him. And yet, he could not accept it. So in one way, actually, every living entity in this world is helplessly controlled by the material nature to the three modes of material nature. So Kamsa also foolishly acted as if he was a puppet in the hands of three modes of material nature. Go to text 23. This. Now he begs forgiveness. Of course, he spoke the jnana, but now he says, Shamadham mama dauratnyam sadhavo dhina batsalam iti yuktva shru mukha padav shala swasrur Kamsa begged, my dear sister and brother-in-law, please be merciful to such a poor-hearted person as me. Since both of you are saintly persons, please excuse my atrocities. Having said this, Kamsa fell at the feet of Vasudev and Devki, his eyes full of tears of regret. Now, this is actually very interesting. Some time ago, Kamsa wanted to kill Devki he wanted to kill the children of Devaki. And now he's actually falling at their feet, Vasudev and Devaki's feet, and begging forgiveness. How could this transformation be possible in person like Kamsa? The Vaishnava Acharya have actually explained in this regard very beautifully, especially Aisha. He explains that Maya, you know, Maya, Yoga Maya that had come. So Maya is the one who actually keeps living and keeps living there. Right? So since Yoga Maya was gone, the bewildering potency of Krishna was gone, no more uh, in the reach of Kamsa. So when a Maya goes away, the person becomes sane. So since Kamsa's Maya was gone, you know, he was freed from the Maya temporarily. It was natural for him to behave the way he's behaving now. He's situated actually in that knowledge, but not for very long. 
But since Maya is gone, the living entity becomes very sober, becomes situated in transcendental wisdom. But as the nature of this world is, a person, if he continues in the bad association, again the Maya will capture him. So we'll see Kamsa, even though he's very sober now, but soon he'll be again captured by Maya. Next 24 says, Mochayam asani gada vishrabdha kanyaka gira devakim vasude vamcha darshayan atma sohudam. Fully believing in the words of Goddess Durga, Kamsa exhibited his familiar affection for Devaki and Vasude by immediately releasing them from the iron shackles. So this is a result when a person actually becomes free from Maya. He actually develops Saurda. He actually again develops, uh, you know, affection or affectionate family relationships or relationship with everyone. In text 25 says, Pratu, Pratu Samannu Taptasya Shanta Roshicha Devakim Devaki Prasadichat Vasude Vasya Prahasya Tam Uvachaha. So when Devaki saw her husband, sorry, her brother actually repented while explaining ardent events, she was relieved of all anger. Similarly, Vasudev also was free from anger, smiling. He spoke to Kamsa as follows. So, uh, Vasudev and Devki are pacified. Why they are pacified? Because they saw genuine repentance. Sama, sam anutaptasya. Anutaptasya or, you know, paschata, you can say. Sam anutaptasya. Total regret. Some is using the terms of total or holy. So Kamsa was actually totally regretful. And that Shanta Roshan, that actually pacified the anger of Dev. She saw that my brother is actually genuinely repentant. So she was the leader of anger. And similarly Vasudeva also. And Vasudeva actually starts speaking. So, uh, what was it that speaks that will continue in the next week? Thank you very much, Devaki. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Brahmaji. Hare Hare. Thank you, Brahmaji. Thank you, Brahmaji. Thank you, Brahmaji. Thank you, Brahmaji. Thank you for sharing that anal com analogy comparing uh, Drona. Bhishma and uh, Kamsa, you know, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and uh, yeah. and about uh, how we can be a sober. So thank you. Yeah, very 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 Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.